With increasing traffic numbers, pedestrian safety has been and is becoming more of a problem. Between underlit nighttime accidents and jaywalking accidents, Florida has become notorious for unintentional pedestrian dangers. In 2017, the number of pedestrian deaths in Florida increased dramatically to 659. According to a recent study by ABC Action News, Hillsborough County is now ranked fourth in pedestrian accidents in Florida. The study concluded these increasing accident numbers are partly due to illegal jaywalking, which can put pedestrians at an increased risk. Jaywalking is particularly dangerous because of unclear co crossing paths, trip hazards, and unset rules. It is very important for pedestrians to become aware and educated on proper road crossing procedures. The high intensity activated crosswalk, called a pedestrian hybrid beacon or a hawk beacon, was developed to help prevent pedestrian related incidents at unsignalized intersections. It allows a pedestrian to approach a street and press a button to activate a warning flashing yellow light, and then it changes to red to signalize to cars that they need to stop. A study was performed by the Federal Highway Administration in 2010 to determine the effectiveness of the Hawk Beacon. The before and after analysis yielded a 29% total crash reduction and a 69% pedestrian crash reduction. Another commonly used pedestrian safety device is the rectangular rapid flash beacon. Unlike the hybrid beacon, an RRFB only flashes yellow lights in an irregular pattern once a pedestrian activates the button to cross. The results of a study analyzing the effectiveness of RRFBs in 2008 showed an increased yielding from 18% to 81% for a no beacon arrangement to a two beacon system. In addition to technology and devices made to protect pedestrians, the current laws and policies in place in Florida are directed towards pedestrian protection also. Florida Law 316.130 states many regulations on how pedestrians should conduct themselves and how vehicles are required to respond. For example, where sidewalks are provided, no pedestrian shall, unless required by other circumstances, walk along and upon the portion of a roadway paved for vehicular traffic and a pedestrian shall obey the instructions of any official traffic control device specifically applicable to the pedestrian unless otherwise directed by a police officer. This means that pedestrians are required to obey traffic control devices such as the Hawk Beacons and RRFBs for their own safety. Introducing these devices into more communities will allow them to become safer and more walkable. A city or town's walkability has actually been quantified in recent years. Factors taken into consideration of walkability are the proximity of shops, services, and places of work, the need to own a car or lack thereof, aesthetics, and the design measures taken to ensure pedestrian safety. The benefits of this new urban development are many, including the reduced need for cars and parking lots, more compact development of buildings, and an increased value of the neighborhood. Walkable communities also create a better socioeconomic environment where active lifestyles, reduced traffic, and safety take precedence in people's lives. Examples of some Tampa St. Pete communities in the early stages of becoming walkable are downtown Tampa, Dunedin, and even parts of the USF Tampa campus. While still being a commuter school, USF's design has made the center of campus a vehicle-free zone where students can walk and congregate without excessive sound pollution or safety hazards. This design contrasts sharply to the surrounding roads of Bruceby Downs Boulevard and Fletcher Avenue, where many pedestrians feel unsafe. While the Tampa Bay area as a whole scores a low 49.4 for walkability, valiant efforts have been made to increase pedestrian safety and accessibility in highly populated and popular areas. These improvements make our local communities more active, more enjoyable, and safer for everyone in the long term.